All right, so today is uh, day four of the class, week, uh, week two. This is week two, day four. Um, so we've got week two going on uh, with some items here. So I had mentioned in the, this is just for your information for the moment, you don't have to go to here, but on week two toolkit, usually I have some sort of link or some sort of useful thing in the toolkit every week. Uh, and if you haven't seen these videos, I recommend that you do see them. Have any of you started to watch any of these videos that I added here supplementally to, to here? A few of you? Okay, good. If you haven't, let me do just a little quick preview of this one. If, if you're deciding which one you want to watch, I definitely recommend the 12 principles ones. I'm not going to play the whole thing. I'm just going to watch a few minutes of it after the ad uh, because there's uh, some really useful content in here. Too many ads. Okay, so let's watch just a moment of this. So I'm just going to jump around a little bit, but this guy, uh, he's got 3 million views on this. This is Alan Becker Tutorials. He's doing a very cool video, 24 minutes long, about the 12 principles of animation, which are also listed in these various books that I have here if you want to check them out. What I like is that he uh, you know, shows you the concept, but what you might see in the book. So there's squash and stretch, see, even without sound. See how that boot is falling down? He's explaining that when it hits the ground, it kind of like uh, squashes a little bit. The, the bouncing ball is a classic uh, technique. When, uh, when it hits the ground, it squashes to show that it hit a surface. When it's falling, it also stretches to show that there's movement. And again, watch the video yourself, but he's contrasting how there's an object that moves without any squash and stretch, without any exaggeration. It looks too stiff and fake. But interestingly, when you make it exaggerated, when you make it stretched out, when you make it squashed, when it hits something, it actually looks more realistic. Even though dropping a real ball in real life, you don't see it actually change. If you look at it like microscopically, it does actually squash and stretch. If you look at anything in slow motion, you watch slow motion video, you realize how much things really change that you don't think about it. So in animation, adding these things, and he's going to show an example with like a person in a moment, obviously with a ball, it makes sense that, okay, the one on the left looks like it's a really, really rubbery ball, the one on the right looks like it's a coconut or something. It's not going to deform as much as the one on the left. Okay, here it is with a person. Look at this, how uh, he's dropping down, and then there's a little stretching and then a little squashing as he hits the ground. You know, the classic dropping down anime pose. Let me go back on that one again. So doing this with your characters as well, stretching them when they're moving, squashing them when they're stopped. Well, it also works with expressions and things. Look at the one first on the left with no squash and stretch. Okay, nice expression. He's surprised. But then the adds the squash and stretch with a little bit of like really surprise, like squashing down, stretching up, surprised. These sorts of things in not in every type of animation, of course, but in this type of classic Disney or Warner Brothers animation, they do this a lot. The Bugs Bunny and Donald Duck style of animation, uh, you see that much more, perhaps a little less in anime. But if you look at anime too, there are these wacky expressions and uh, stretching out and squashing that they also have there in a lot of forms of animation. So this is, you know, a 20 minute long video. Let me s jump over a little bit over here. Actually, there's chapters right here. I'm going to jump over to staging. This is all about um, preparing a scene. Staging is the presentation of any idea so that it is completely and unmistakably clear. So basically, don't confuse the viewer. It'll show you right here, like, okay, he's going to take out something from the hat. Oh, it's a rabbit. So all of that about, like, um, really explaining what I'm about to do. Let me back it up right here. Uh, I've got a hat here. I'm about to reach in and grab it, and I've got a rabbit. So all of that is about staging, like really uh, putting it over the top. I'm about to do something. What do you think is going to happen there? And everyone laughs at him. So he's saying, first there's the focus on the banana peel on the ground. Nothing's happening. Focus on the banana. Then the person is walking. Focus on the person for a moment. Then there's a slip. Focus on the person slipping. Then there's the comedy of everyone laughing. Back to him. He's sad. 
Um, another example there. Now, what if it all happens all weirdly? He shows the example without good staging. Like, what am I looking at? That's happening, that's happening, it's too fast, what's this, why is that? So staging, see again there, staging is all about focusing on one thing at a time. It's, it's kind of hard sometimes to think about it that way. I have this amazing idea, I want to draw it, I want to animate it, but you need to kind of slow it down, focus it, so that one idea is happening at a moment at a time. Let's see what else. So again, too much is happening. I don't know where to focus on. Where's the comedy? So the mess, wait, the mess represent the camera? Yeah, like your eye, your point of view, where you're looking at. Oh, okay. Right here it talks about, do you want to be far away? Do you want to be close up? It talks about how action, you know, epic action is often very good far away, so you can see a lot of things at once. Then, like, expressions are often close, close up to the camera. Uh, don't put things off center. You usually want to be somewhere on the center or the rule of thirds. And again, watch it yourself. He's talking about a lot of important things. I'm just kind of zooming through it. And uh, yeah, you can watch that on your own. It's really nice. And you can get a version of, that, of those concepts from these books, specifically. The Art of Cartoony, I've got two of them, and I've also got the Animate with CC. Both of these definitely have those topics, so you can see it in, in a specific chapter, uh, how it makes sense. I, I'm doing a thing that if you want to get a book, you just write your name and the name of the book here just to check it out, to show that you got it for the day. But this video is, you know, a video version, if you can hear it even better. But as we're watching it, you're getting some idea of what's going on. Here again, it's about distracting. Like, what am I supposed to pay attention to? The bird, the juggler, um, you know, just focus on a little at a time. So watch that video on your own. Uh, that will help you in the movie you're going to do that is eventually going to be due on the first of next month. So we ha we're gonna have, <clears throat> we're gonna have a lecture today. Uh, and then the 24th and the 26th, um, a little bit of lecture. I think what we need to cover, we can cover it a lot of it today and then next time on the 24th. In between, you're also going to start to work on the, the project and I'll give you the exact bullet points of what you need to do very soon. But I want to cover the concepts first and then everything comes together about what you need to do exactly. And so yeah, based on the, the model sheet that you did previously, you want to um, I would recommend to keep using the uh, characters that you invented before. Pick one of someone that's not here. So I don't pick on them. Uh, who's not here? Can't find one. I know I had Adan's out here. Here it is. He's not here. So um, the the one that you started with. Uh, I would recommend to keep using it as the class goes on because you've already invested some time in thinking of a character and hopefully you're doing your model, your storyboard based on this character. You can of course change it if you want and get a brand new idea for your main movie, that's fine. But again, looking at our timeline, we have next week, definitely the 26th will be a full day of lab time. Uh, the first might be a little lab time, but we need to start the next topic, which will be games. Uh, the 24th will be probably at least half lab time, and then today after we do our, our lecture, some lab time, and half there as well. So any notes that I wrote on your model sheets, you, if you didn't get the perfect grade that you wanted, you could resubmit it, uh, possibly based on my comments or other things that, um, that maybe you didn't get your full credit. You can get slightly higher credit on that. So... Watch that video on your own. I'm going to go back to what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we'll go into Adobe Animate. So I've already got my pen plugged in. I've got Adobe Animate. Um, we're going to work again with HD quality uh, footage and at the classic uh, frame rate, uh, cinema frame rate. So when we get into Animate here, let's go up to File, New. And what I meant by all of that is our width and height. Our width will be 1920 by 1080, frame rate 24. So that means, you know, cinema frame rate, classic movie uh, animation speed. Higher frame rates are superfluous. That's really only for like games 
when you need 60 frame rate 60 fps and higher that's for like games you're going to do an animated movie because what fps obviously is frames per second so basically every drawing there are 24 drawings per second so some of the smoothest animation you know, picking something up and throwing it over here, that takes one second. I'm going to draw 24 little drawings from picking it up to throwing it. That's a lot of work. 60 frames per second, 30 frames per second, that means you've got 30 drawings in between this movement and this movement, if it takes a second. So 24 frame rate is a very good frame rate for animation, and we'll see how we can take advantage of it. Background color, again, I'll put it as, a, as an off gray just so that I can see, so that I can differentiate if my, if my character has white eyes, I differentiate it from the background so that it's uh, actually visible. And you, of course, will be able to add any sort of backgrounds you want, and we'll cover a few different topics with backgrounds and music and movement and so forth. I'm going to click OK on that. Up on the zoom, I'm going to go to fit window just so that I can see everything at one time. And then I'll go to save as. I'm going to go to file save as. And this is uh, basically our project two. So to get us started, what I would do is go over to your flash drive or desktop or wherever you're saving this. I'm saving this to my flash drive and create a brand new folder called your last name dash project two. So basically every project is going to be in its own folder so that we don't lose track of the things. Just make a folder somewhere, hopefully on your flash drive, on your desktop, but remember to take it with you, email it to yourself or something. And in a new folder with your last name dash project two, and we'll call this today's date practice. So just save the file, kind of anything you want, really. But uh, we're saving an FLA file. We're going to do a little practice. So again, I'll give you the bullet points of what you need to do. But you need to do a movie that is at least 30 seconds long. I can show examples from students again if you'd like. I, I put them in the network folder, actually. And some of them were 31 seconds long. Some were two minutes long. You can be at any rate that you want. If you make a 10-minute epic, fine. You probably did not sleep the whole week. Um, 30 seconds minimum uh, to get the minimal grade for that bullet point. Well, what I love about Animate uh, is that, obviously, it tells you right here, this is three seconds. If you're on frame 72, it's three seconds. So pay attention to those markers right there. It tells you how long your movie is, is going. You often want to deal with the concept of scenes because you want to focus on one thing for a moment and focus on another. Let's say we're going to make a totally simple movie of a, um, of a mouse in a house. So if you're not artistic, that's OK. Stick figure mouse will work. But what we want to do is um, we're going to set up a scene with a mouse. Uh, so you can be a computer mouse, I guess, if you want to be ironic. But I'm going to draw a little mouse. So uh, I don't know. I'll draw a mouse. Here's a mouse. Sure. So just draw some mouse. Yep, that's a mouse. OK, so my idea is I storyboarded it. Let's say I storyboarded it, and I have this great idea. This mouse is going to do fun stuff. Does uh, a movie or an animation oftentimes just start like that with the action? Do we see it like right away, something happen like this? Don't we oftentimes have some sort of like intro text? Uh, or music or something like that. Okay, so let's say I do want to actually have like the name of my movie appear on screen before this uh, animation. This is when scenes come into play. Did you guys talk about scenes in part one of the class? Does that sound familiar, scenes? Okay, so let's go up to window menu, scenes, 
Let's open our scene panel up on the window menu. So we're going to create a scene, first of all, for title. We've got scene one, which is the mouse. Uh, maybe I'll rename that to say mouse at the moment. Just double click that. You can call it mouse. Before the mouse, before I see the mouse, I want to have a scene that says the name of my movie. So add the new scene right here, add scene button. It appears after the current scene. So remember, this goes from top to bottom of the sequence. It will first play scene mouse, then scene two. I, I don't want that. I want scene two, which will actually be title. I want that to play first. So just drag it up first. The sequence of the scenes is top to bottom. Title scene will play first, then mouse scene. OK, so. I'm not going to get too fancy with this sort of demo, but I'm going to write the name of my movie over here, The Mouse in the House. I want it to animate in and rotate and sparkle and all that great stuff. I'm not going to quite worry about it just yet. Question? Sure. You know what, that actually that reminds me of something. I might, have, I might have skipped a little step here. Let's check one thing here. If you're not seeing your scenes, I forgot to mention this. When we went to File New, um, I forgot to say, we needed it to be in the, in the type of ActionScript 3 if you were on HTML Canvas or WebGL. I think oh. some things are missing. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I forgot about that. I do have that in the bullet points, but I forgot to mention it right now. So yeah. let's back up and do this. If you're not seeing that scene panel, um, you can save your file, and then go back to File, New, and this time let's create it again, but let's select Action Script 3. Yeah, that explains, well, I'm trying to make another scene of the expression, but mm -hmm. the canvas doesn't work on my software, and I was like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, that's easy to forget. They've uh, started to have yeah. Canvas as the default one, but this I one is the one we want instead. Layer, so I didn't have time for that. So let's back up over here, everyone. You probably all have to do it. I think that was my mistake there. Uh, so this thing that we were drawing here, um, we can actually copy it and paste it between projects. I'll show you that in a moment. But I'm going to do File New. And I'm going to do that again, 1920, 1080, 24 frames, gray. And uh, make sure you've selected Action Script 3. Even though we're not writing any code yet in this type of project is just all animation. Um, Action Script 3 is still the mode that we want to, to activate some of these animation features, such as sound synchronization. When we get to sound, I want a certain sound to play in a certain scene, or I want a sound to play at a certain moment. Um, Action Script 3 is the mode that we want. So I'm going to select that, click OK. I'm going to save this new file. And um, practice, I don't know, mouse. Um, I can copy the stuff. I can just do a simple copy and paste from one file into this file. That's, uh, that's annoying there. Sorry about that. We, we want to save that properly there. Back over on my other file, we can do a select all. You can also click on, or just redraw it, you can click on the frame here to select all, control C, copy, and then we'll switch over to the other file, control V to paste, or right click paste. So we'll have to copy and paste things over, or draw it again if you want. But I'm going to copy my, my stuff over just because I already started to draw it. Let's see there, pasting that in there, scene one, title, new scene, mouse. From my other file, I'm going to go back to the mouse scene and click on the frame. It's a great time saver. You can click on the frame down here to select all quickly. And then copy, right click copy or control C. And then in your other file, paste.
Okay, so let me pause there. That was confusing. Make sure you've made a, a, an Action Script 3 file. And you've got a title scene and the mouse scene. And I'm just writing the name of the scene, the, the name of the movie, the mouse in the house. I'll pause right there. Make sure you have that. If you have any trouble, of course, check with me before we go on. Yeah, mine didn't boot on. Two scenes. One scene has the text. Another scene has a little mouse. Okay, so again, if, if I want this to animate, if I want it to do something fun, um, this needs to be turned into a symbol. So I want to select everything and turn it into a symbol. So again, the quick way to select everything, you can click on the, uh, the frame at the bottom, everything selected. I'm going to then right click what I selected. Uh, and then we will select, I always do it by keyboard shortcuts, right there, convert to symbol, F8, basically. You want to memorize F8. I want to convert something into a symbol so I can animate it. You can right-click it, convert to symbol. The point of this is then I can then rotate that text, I can make it grow, I can do different animations to it. Convert to symbol. You will say, um, usually I name these by what type of movie, uh, what type of uh, object it is. So we'll say MC because it's a movie clip title. These names will matter more when we do coding because via the coding it will pay attention to what objects you've created. So MC title, it's a movie clip. It's some text title. Registration here, if it doesn't have it, I would s click this one right here. So if we need to grow it or rotate it, it rotates from the center. So now this whole thing, all of these separate words are one, one symbol. I can work with them all at once. So I want to take five seconds so that this movie starts small and gets big, like it comes at you. I want it to take five seconds. So we'll go over on our timeline over here and go look for the five seconds. It's frame 120. Right click insert keyframe or Keyboard shortcut F6. So on frame 120, you can press F6. That's the faster way. Or you can right click, insert keyframe. So animation happens between keyframes. You set, it looks like this, then it looks like this, and something in the middle happens. Like for example, it'll, it'll get big. So I've got a keyframe there. Now what I want to happen is at the beginning, frame 1, it starts off small. And then on frame 120, it gets big. So I'll go back to frame 1, and I will shrink this using the free transform or keyboard shortcut Q. I'll shrink it down some amount. Frame 1, it starts off small, frame 1, on frame 120, on keyframe 120, it's the original big size. In between, you want to right click anywhere and then select 
create classic tween. It'll then animate it for you in between in a very simple way that it'll start small and get big. So now when I press play at the bottom or press enter, okay, the text is coming at you. Now animation, it's not only drawings, but it's also time. Right now, it's taking five seconds to, to come in. Maybe that's too much. Maybe it's not enough. Well, if it's too slow, um, I need to speed it up. Well, it needs to have uh, less frames. Right now, it takes 120 frames to get to where I want it to. Well, it's too slow, maybe. If I want it to speed up, I would do less frames. If I wanted it faster, I can move that final frame somewhere over here, two seconds. And now it's going to animate faster. I'm not going to change it, but I'm just showing you that when it first took 120 frames, it took five seconds to move. And when it's only at 50 frames, it, it goes faster. So less frames, it's faster. More frames, it's slower. That'll work with any of these principles of animation. If I want to my character to jump, if it takes 10 frames for the character to jump, it's at a certain speed. If the character then takes 5 frames to jump, it jumped faster. If it takes 15 frames to jump, it jumped slower. So more frames, slower time, slower action. If we kind of want to test what we've got so far, we can obviously just press play and it plays the current scene. But if I want to test the whole movie, we have control test or control enter. We do control enter. Here's my movie so far. And this uh, might be a little bit basic, but obviously we're, we're, we're getting to more advanced things very fast, such as I see a subliminal mouse for a moment. Do you see a subliminal mouse? It didn't appear long enough because, of course, we haven't, we don't have that mouse visible long enough. Right now, that mouse only exists for one frame, one twenty-fourth of a second, and then this animation is taking one hundred and twenty frames. So I want my mouse to be visible a little longer, two seconds. Um, I want to go over to the mouse scene. I want to turn this into a symbol. I may want to animate it. I may want to move it around, make it bigger, etc. So let's go over to the mouse uh, scene, and I'm going to select the mouse drawing, and then the same thing, F8, to turn it into a symbol, or right click. Call this MC Mouse. It's a movie clip for this mouse. So the mouse that I drew, I want to turn it into a symbol. And I want this mouse to be visible two seconds. So if we go over to frame uh, 47 or 48, where it says two seconds, um, we need keyframes when things change, and we need regular frames when things don't. So if I were doing the right-click insert keyframe, it would make a new frame because something's going to change. I don't need it to change yet. If I do right click, insert um, frame, it, it continues the previous frame, which is the same as F5. So F5 basically adds time, adds frames. The mouse is visible now between frames 1 and 47, 48. I've added more time with F5. If there's a change that's going to happen, that needs a new keyframe, F6. 
So now this mouse will be visible for two seconds. And now when I control enter, I have that title doing stuff. And then the mouse is visible two seconds, and then it starts over. This is one of these principles in these books about animation, about um, uh, staging, about anticipation, basically pausing, showing focus. For beginners, I see this all the time in all these years that I've taught these classes. In your mind, you drew it long enough. In your mind, it's visible on screen long enough. Then when I watch it, it's not because I'm looking at it fresh. I'm looking at it for the first time these you know five seconds. You've been looking at it for hours or days. So in your mind, yeah, that mouse is visible long enough next onto the next scene. So always think about it in those terms that other people are going to look at your movie. They don't have it memorized like you do. You know, count it out in your mind or count it out out loud. One second, two second, three second. Does it feel like it's visible long enough? Especially when people put text on the screen. That's the most funny one when I when I do people's assignments. People put text on the screen like the mouse says, I want cheese, but they put it for seven frames. That's less than one second. So there's not enough time to read it. Especially when there's text, you want it longer so people can read it. You've read it in your mind over and over, but not people. Speaking of which, I think this title does its animation and then it segues too fast into the mouse. So I want to add some more time, one second of a pause to the text when it reaches its maximum zoom in. I want to pause the text so we can look at it for a moment. There's still action happening. It's still zooming in. We haven't concluded the action. Remember these concepts of like staging. What am I looking at? While it's moving and everything, you're not, you know, you don't have a breather. You don't have, you don't pause. Your mind doesn't um, fully comprehend what's happening. We want it to stop for one second at the end right here and then go to the mouse. So let's back up to frame one or title, title scene. I want to add one second of extra time. Is that F6 or F5 or F8? F5. F5 adds more time. F6 adds a new keyframe to make changes. F8 makes a symbol. So F5 on frame 144 or six seconds. And now when this animates for five seconds, then it pauses for one second. And then it goes over to the next scene, the mouse scene. What you want to do is you often want to stop and play it, control enter, just so that you can get a sense of it. There it is, a little pause, then it goes over to the mouse and we can continue our action. Let me pause right there. Does anyone need a little help? Is, do you have something like that? Title scene, you've got it zooming in, pausing a little. Mouse scene, you've got the mouse pause for a moment. Anyone need a little help? Now this of course will be amazing with some music, but here's what it is so far. One of the requirements that you'll have is of time. Your movie needs to be at least 30 seconds. Unfortunately, I don't think there's a, I, I haven't found it unless they've added it recently. I don't think there's a place somewhere that tells you the total length of your movie. While you're working on it, you do have to do a little math yourself. I've got six seconds so far of the title, and I've got two seconds of the mouse. I've got eight seconds in total for my movie. I need at least 30 seconds. When you export it eventually, and we'll cover that too, exporting it as a movie, well, obviously when it's fully exported, it'll tell you you've got a 29 second long movie. Oops, that's not an A on that. You need 30 seconds at least. So you wanna keep aware of that, that you'll have to manually add up your, your scenes in, in Adobe Animate, unless there's somewhere that I haven't found yet, some sort of panel that tells you the length of your whole movie. If you find that extra credit. So, the other concept that we will uh, talk about, or have required, of course, is scenes. Uh, true or false? You'll get a better grade if you have 10 scenes. True or false? You'll get a better grade if you get 20 scenes. False. False for all of them. It doesn't matter how many scenes you have, you need at least two. But the point of the scene is to mostly focus attention. 
I want to focus on the title of my movie, so I'll put it in a scene. I want to put credits at the end of my movie, I should put it in a scene. I want to focus on the part of the movie where now, uh, you know, the mouse is running through the kitchen, maybe put it in a new scene. So the point is, uh, I'm not going to grade on how many scenes you have. I'm going to check your file to see you have scenes. And if you don't have scenes, okay, minus points. But if you do have scenes, positive points. So any number of scenes will work, more than one, usually two or more. So I've got this mouse. And what I wanted to do is I want to see I want it um, I want us to see that we are in like a house. Um, right now the mouse doesn't exist anywhere. it's just floating there and I want it to be in, in a house. But a mouse obviously is small, so I'm going to draw in scale that it's like the floor is down small. So uh, I've got one layer, layer one, which we'll rename to say mouse. I'll create a new layer, background, it also does not hurt for you to separate everything that you need into its own layer. You can then animate them differently. We'll cover parallax scrolling eventually, which is that things move on your, on your scene in different speeds, which causes the illusion of depth. You see this often in animation. There's a car driving. Behind the car, there's mountains. But in front of the car, there's trees. And the trees are passing really fast. But the mountains are passing really slow. Because the mountains are further away, the trees are closer, they pass faster. We'll have a lesson on that eventually. For the moment, though, I have a layer for the mouse. And a layer for the background. I'm going to lock my mouse layer for a moment because it's I don't want to draw on the wrong layer I want to draw on the background layer and I'm gonna draw I'm gonna draw this this is just like I don't know the floorboards of this house and here's a mouse hole I'm going to color it and all that great stuff later. But I'm also drawing outside of the scene for a reason. So I'm just draw some sort of simple background that shows there's a wall. That's the four floorboards. You know, if you, if you, a lot of the way that you draw well is to look at the real world. If you look in this room right now, if you look at the edges of the room, there's a black, um, Floor, what's that thing called? There's um, a the thing that goes all the way around the corners of the room. Um, that board down there, so board, floor board, yes. So there's a there's a black and then gray. I can draw that and animate. And then above that, there's like the little computer wallpaper thing, and then blue. So again, look at the real world and look at your environment, and you don't have to get too fancy right now. But based on that, I've drawn a floorboard area. Outside, I've also zoomed out a lot because outside, I'm going to, to the left, I'm going to draw over here, outside of my, outside of my scene, kind of, I'm going to draw a piece of cheese. I'm going to draw the classic cheese. Let's see, it's like a little triangle, right? Swiss cheese. Because the idea that I'm getting to is, we can use the camera that comes in um, uh, Adobe Animate to focus on one thing and then move the camera to focus on another, to zoom out, to zoom in. We have the ability to do that with the camera tool. But my idea is that first, what I'm going to see when we get to this scene is the mouse. And then maybe I'm going to zoom out so that I see the cheese. I'm going to zoom into the cheese and then have the mouse move to the cheese. 
This is again these concepts, staging, anticipation, etc. Focus on things. If I saw both the mouse and the cheese right away when this movie started, I'm not quite building up to anything. It's just there. Uh, something's going to happen, but it, I'm not really kind of planning anything. I'm not guiding people, intriguing them and such. I'm going to focus on the mouse first, then move the camera over. Oh, there's some cheese. Move back to the mouse, zoom out, and then have the mouse go to it. You know, there's a million ways to do it. Like I said a moment ago, maybe zoom out first, then zoom into the cheese, then zoom into the mouse. You know, how we do that, that's going to depend on what your vision for the movie is. But I can show you the tools. A lot of times these multimedia classes are about you learning the tools and then you putting them together to make your vision. Well, the camera will work right over here. You have right here, add camera. It's a special layer. Did you guys ever talk about the camera in part one? No. Okay, no. we'll talk about the camera. So the camera is it's going to be its own new layer with its own sort of concept. So if you click on it, you get a brand new layer. You get this control here. Or if you move it to the right, it zooms in. On the left, it zooms out. And this is relative, actually, because if I zoom out to the right and let it go, I can continue to zoom in. So this, because it's vector-based drawings, I can zoom in all the way right here to focus in right on the mouse's face so I can see his expression of anguish when he sees that the piece of cheese is fake. Or I can zoom out a lot to get the whole scene. So when you zoom it out and let it go, you can then keep zooming it out. Now you also have on the actual scene, and this is like kind of backwards, it's, I believe it's called Y flipped. You might know that term if you play games. If you click it and drag to the left, everything moves to the right. You click it and drag to the right, everything moves to the left. That's because this is supposed to be the idea of a real camera in real life, that you know, these really big cameras, these big cameras, if I rotate to, the, to my left, if I'm rotating to my left, I'm rotating to the right, so the, the scene moves. So just something to get used to, that if you move your mouse up, it's like I am moving the camera like that, so it points down. If I move the camera mouse to the left, I'm rotating it like this so that the scene is to the right. It's just something to get used to. You're going to mess it up all the time. I do it also too. I want to move it up and I put up, oops, I mean I mean down. So this allows you to move it in, you know, X, Y, Z axis. This allows you to uh, zoom in, zoom out. You can switch between these two modes. There's the mode here of zooming and such. There's the mode here of rotating, so we can also have rotation happening. Now after, after you kind of move it all and you want it to put it back exactly how it was, I believe what you need to do there is turn it off. Um, so how do we reset that back to normal? <sighs> That's the one that I always forget. I have to look it up. But if you wanted it to rotate exactly where it was before, there should be a way to do it. I have to look it up. Let me just put it back the way it was. Right now we're just experimenting with this idea of the camera. You either have it to zoom, to rotate, you can grab the scene and move it because my idea is I want these changes between one scene or one frame to another frame you know similar to what I had what we had seen before um, about animating things And I'll do this in a moment here. But you see here, I'm doing a zoom out. And I'll do it in just a moment. But this is the idea of keyframes plus tweens equal animation. So let me back up. Basically, wherever you put a keyframe, some change happened. 
so you can start moving around. However, again, I still want my two seconds of pause. I bet you wanted to start to change the camera already. Well, we want to keep these two seconds. We've moved from the title scene to the mouse scene. I want to pause here for two seconds to see. There's a mouse. Then I want to start to animate it. So let me put, put that back how that was right here. So we will say, um, let's say for the only thing that's going to really change is the camera. So let's say I want to extend my mouse. Let's say I want to extend everything actually to four seconds. If you click and drag to select everything at four seconds over here, and press F5. So all of these frames are selected. F5 on the keyboard to stretch it out to four seconds. But now I want to do the part about moving things around. So I've got the, the two seconds of pause. Then I want the camera to start doing stuff. So I need an F6 here, because it's going to change between here and here. Let's say one second. Between two and three, there will be a change. And between three and four, another change. Every time there's a change, basically F6. And the only thing that's changing is the camera. So F6 on that. Frame on, C, on second two, camera layer, F6 on second three, and then F6 on second four. I'm setting up keyframes for changes. So now between this point and this point, this frame and this frame, I want to change it. I'll back up to frame three, and now I'll start to change Let's say I'm going to pan the camera over here to the side. I'm going to have to finish drawing my background, no problem. I can still do so. It's on its own layer. I'll fix that in a moment. But now, on frame, on second number two, I'm still focused on the mouse. On second number three, I've moved the camera over to focus on the cheese, maybe, you know, further in the center. Finish drawing that if I want. And then in between, right click, create classic tween. then have it pause again to pay attention to that for a moment <coughs> or I could continue to move things out maybe I'm going to zoom out so that both things are on the screen at the same time and um, continue my animation so let's see what I want to do maybe I do want to zoom out When you switch between um, tools, I have to go back to the drawing tool to finish my wall. I want to go back to my camera to keep working with it. I want to switch back to the camera tool. If you turn on or off the layer, that's slightly different. You want to go back and forth between a drawing tool and the camera tool, switch back to the camera tool there. Because then that gives me back my control here so I can continue to change this. Yeah. 
question, raise your hand. Is it all cameras, it's every layer, or you can make one layer at a time of camera? There's only one camera at a time, actually. Um, you kind of can fake it with different scenes. Yeah, because everything that I move, it's all in layers, but I just leave one layer of the other. Well, the camera will only exist in one layer, Actually, and then every uh, other item that you have can be in its own layer. Oh, it should be, as a matter of fact. I think I made a mistake. Hold on. That's because it's So the idea that I have here is after the pause, the camera moves over to show the cheese. I would have liked to pause there too, so I might have to back up to to add a little time. But I'm just showing you again that this is one of the reasons why the storyboards are also valuable. I have this idea of, one, of what I want to show. And if you just go right away to the software, you might figure out, well, I should have done this, I should have done that. It doesn't make sense at this point. Like in my case right here, it, it moves over to the left a little, but then right away starts to zoom out. I would like to move over pause there with the cheese for a moment then start to zoom out but again I can play the play the whole project just to see what it looks like that zooms in that pauses for a moment we see the mouse for a moment music is playing moves over here then moves out right there again it suddenly starts all over again of course because I didn't have extra time at the end of my movie makes sense but this is something to get used to that you probably often want to add a little bit of F5 time at the end of anything you've just done so that there's a little time to, to pause it. So there's the mouse. Zooming out. So I do want to pause looking at the cheese for a moment. So I might have to remove a key. For, I might have to remove a, a, a tween. If I add a tween, it will animate it for me between those frames. I want it actually not to animate yet. So I'll go back to right click, remove the tween. I want between three and four to stay paused. I got a little quirk right here that might happen to you too. For for whatever reason, I didn't notice how it happened, but here's how you would fix it. Uh, it for whatever reason, mine on, on three seconds, it shows like that. For whatever reason, then on four, it looks too weird. One way to sort of sometimes fix your future frames is to delete the frame and then just continue the previous frame. So what I mean with that is this last frame over here actually isn't what I want. I want it to continue to pause at that moment. So that final frame there, I can right click, remove frames. And then I can just press F6 again, and it recreates that frame based on the previous frame. So it, it went back to that one back there, it copied it there, F6, so I remove the frame first, then F6 to bring back that frame. So now there's a pause. Add more time here, maybe to six seconds, and then start to do more animation. So I need to extend everything over to six seconds. So I'm selecting everything to six seconds. I want to add more time at five. So I have the camera moving over, pause from here to here. Now I want it to animate from four to five or maybe four to six seconds where I zoom out to see both things at once. I'll say six seconds, sure. So between four and six, it's gonna take two seconds to do the zoom out. So here's where I need an F6. Or I change things, I'm going to zoom out, reposition. So at here I have a focus on the cheese, over here I have a focus on both of them, then in between, tween it. You 
can also do control test scene. If you do control enter, it starts from the very beginning of your movie, and sometimes you want to look at it in that complete flow, and sometimes you only want to test that one scene you're looking at. Now, it does take it out of context, but sometimes if I've got already, you know, 20 seconds of animation, I want to play 20 seconds to get to these last five, I might just want to play this scene. So that's control alt enter to only play this scene. Although remember, it does loop, so you get that it zooms out, zooms in, zooms out, then it starts over again. I might have to pause it a moment. If I want to pause it one second, I can then add F5 frames all the way there to seven seconds. Seven and a half, eight. I'm just using whole numbers here for you know whole seconds. So I have seven seconds of this scene plus five second or six seconds of the first. No, yeah, five of the first, seven of here. That's twelve in total. I'm almost halfway through my thirty second minimum. So you see, on the one hand, you could do your minimum time pretty quickly, and on the other hand. Um, you may feel like, well, I, I don't know what more to put. Now if I, oops, if I test this scene. Let's say at this point I want to start to um, move the mouse over to start to approach the cheese. So from here I've, I've zoomed out, I've paused for a moment to see this new action, which is the mouse the mouse sees the cheese. After that, I can start to move forward. I'll add some more time, maybe over 10 seconds here. From seven, from seven to, from seven to eight, I, I think I'll start the mouse to move. I don't need the camera to move, I need the mouse to move. So now it's about the, the mouse layer needs some keyframes. So starting on frame 168 or so, again, if your numbers don't line up with mine, that's fine. Your numbers don't have to be exactly what mine are. You, you will figure it out as you work with it. F, um, F6 with the mouse because something's about to change. So F6 because the mouse is about to do something else, and maybe I'll make it take a, you know, a really, really slow stroll, nine seconds, another F6 there. 
And now I'll start to move this, this object closer, somewhere over here. So at this point, it's at this position. And then it's at this position. In between, simple animation. I want its legs to move, and I want its ears to move. Of course, we'll cover that a little later. But um, here now, it's starting to move towards the cheese. So a lot of uh, an idea with animation is there's a beginning, middle, and end. There's some sort of introduction of things. There's some sort of conflict. And there's some sort of re resolution. If you think about various TV shows or movies, it's a lot of that over and over in terms of there is some sort of setup, some sort of conflict or problem to solve, and then some sort of result. Uh, again, imagining that I did this on the storyboard, I had the idea that, okay, the introduction is there's a mouse in a house, there's some cheese. But oftentimes, if there's a mouse in a house, what might there also be? A cat. So the conflict might be there's a cat. So after we've established, here's the mouse, there's some cheese, it's going towards the cheese. Maybe on those last few frames, the head of a, the head of a cat pops up for a moment and then to be continued, because we want people to watch the next clip or subscribe or whatever. So setting up something like that, this is again, when we were watching the video a little bit earlier about competing attention, we could have the, the, the head of the cat start to appear while the mouse is moving. So you've got two things happening which depending how you do it may work or may not. You may be having two things pulling the people's attention. You may have that the mouse suddenly stops. It sees something. Half a second later, then the, the, the cat's head starts to appear. So both of those are a possibility. It would be up to you to decide which one you want. They both have a, a certain style to them and, and, a, and a, you know, a feeling to them. But based on the principles of animation, the 12 principles don't confuse people. So I would perhaps think about focusing on the one about stop the action of the mouse for a moment organically and then start the action of the cat. Because the, the mouse would stop and it has a freaked out expression because then the, uh, the cat's head, the shadow of the cat starts to go on, on the screen maybe. If you do both the movement and the shadow of the cat, maybe it's not as strong as it could be. So I'll do it that way. I'm going to have the mouse stop for a moment, and then I'm going to focus on the cat. So let's say nine seconds right here. If we're dealing with 24 frames per second, so between 216 and uh, 240, that's 24 seconds in the middle, uh, in between, I mean. So half of a second, 24 frames per second is 24 frames in one second. <coughs> Half a second is then 12 frames. Sometimes you do a little math. So that means that if I'm over here at 216, 216 plus 12 is 228. That would be exactly halfway between one second. 24 frames is one second. 12 frames is half a second. So I need to add 12 frames from my point right here, where the mouse has stopped moving half a second of pause. 216 plus 12, 228 is where I want a keyframe, F6, so that now something can change. Now here, the mouse can sort of react. And I'll 
do it completely simple, even though it's in its own symbol, but I'm going to draw here. And it's not doing any squash and stretch, it's not doing any of that fancy stuff that I, I can't quite do just yet. But what's happening is that the mouse, uh, the mouse is moving over. Now, do you know the keyboard shortcut to, to move frame by frame? Did you guys learn that? I'm using the keyboard to move back. I'm not using the mouse. I'm using the keyboard. Anyone know that shortcut? Yeah. Period and comma. The period and the commas on the keyboard will move you left or right. So sometimes you need to do it that way rather than the mouse. So my point here is if I go back up here and then move here, and I can see with period and comma, I can go forward or back a frame at a time. Because what I want to do is, the most fluid animation is 24 frames per second in that in one chunk of time, 24 frames, you've, uh, you've drawn 24 different drawings. So I would make the eyebrows start to move I would make the, the ears start to move a little bit, then I would move them more, and I would take 24 frames to do it. Well, um, 12 frames worth of animation is still going to be very smooth, meaning instead of going to the next frame over F6 and then drawing, oops, going to the next frame over here F6 and then drawing a little bit more and a little bit more, instead of doing that you know, one frame at a time, it's okay to, to do every other frame. So what I mean is I've started to draw the worried, the worried expression right here. I'm going to jump two frames over, F6, draw a little bit more. I'm going to start to draw the mouth, jump two frames more, F6, draw some more. So jumping every two frames, F6, to draw a little bit more is perfectly good, perfectly viable. It'll still be smooth. You don't have to draw a new drawing every single frame. You could if you have a team of animators at a real studio. But you yourself, you'll still get very good animation by doing this. It's called drawing in twos, or I believe animating in twos. You skip a frame you draw a frame every other frame. So you're doing 12 different drawings per second. It's still going to be pretty smooth. Because when I play it over here, the expression of the mouse is starting to happen. And then on a separate layer, a brand new layer, a cat layer. On, on its own new cat layer, F6, so I can draw, start to draw a brand new shape, the cat, the outline of the cat. Over here we have the expression of the mouse happening for a few frames, a little pause as well, and then starting with something happening with the cat. So the cat, maybe just the back of the head, maybe it pops into view for a moment, however you imagined it in your head, the appearance of the cat, I imagined it just the back of the head of the cat coming up from the frame of the moment. If you imagine that the side profile of the cat moves into the frame, that's valid too. Did you imagine it happening on the right side, the bottom, the left, up, wherever? Wherever you've imagined it to happen, you, you can do it. That's the great thing about animation. You can do what you want because it is, you're inventing it. But the idea is using the right tools to get your vision across. Because you can learn the tools, but you, the idea and such is, is in you. Okay, so let's see. Let's say I will take this. I'll take all of these frames to tw to 12 seconds, F5, just so that I have time.
to work with from 10 I'm gonna draw I'm gonna draw the back of a cat's head uh, in in the frame but then I'm gonna move it I just want to see it because it's gonna be on the gray and it's a little harder to see but uh, I don't know, I'm just gonna draw a cat's head over here it's too small but I can make it big with the scale tool Again, you don't need to get too fancy That needs to be big because the cat's often bigger than the mouse. But I'm going to draw it outside of the frame because I'm going to animate it coming into the frame like this. We'll take a break in a moment. We'll, we'll just finish this idea here, then we'll take a break. Oh, and when we come back, we will do the, the next scene and then a little music. Um, but the idea here is eventually the cat will move into view. So eventually the cat will move into view, but before that it needs to be a symbol. Question. We need music at minimum, and you can add sound effects also if you want. No, uh, just sound effect. I mean, to make a sound. Nope, that probably won't work. You uh, you need uh, at least music, and you can also add sound effects on top. But we can look at your particular idea one on one if you'd like. But the main idea will be music. Oh, okay. So I'm going to convert this. I've drawn the back of the cat's head. I'm going to convert this into a symbol, F8. Call this MC cat. Turning it into a symbol then lets me do some some forms of animation onto it and one of them is I just want it to move so let's say now I want this to happen really fast like half a second worth of fast or maybe even faster so half a second 12 frames I'm I'm currently on frame 240 24 frames is one second 12 frames is half a second I'm at 240 240 plus 12 takes me to 252 so at 252 in my case I want a new keyframe, F6. I want to move the item up somewhere. And then tween it. So it takes half a second to pop into view. That might be a good speed. Everything else has been happening relatively slow so far. Then you have this fast cat that's contrast. If everything's happening in a certain way the whole time and suddenly something happens in a different way that catches people's attention. If the camera movements have been slow and the mouse has been moving slow but the cat moves fast, people will notice that. Again, the focus, the attention of your, of, of your action. And then in my case, I have uh, a few seconds of pause there. So if I play my whole project from the beginning, I've got the opening title. Look at the mouse for a moment. Look at the cheese. Zoom out to see both. Little pause. Mouse starts to move forward. Stops. Gets worried. Cat. And then, of course, I want the to be continued and so forth. But this is starting to come together. This first like version, this quick sketchy version is a way to do this project as well. You do just quick stick figures and so forth. Once you've got the general timing, if I made that mouse into a symbol, I can eventually go back to 
my my library and we'll cover this a little later but I can go back to my library and I can go in and redraw that mouse perfectly in my library and wherever I have it animated it'll just automatically fit itself back in better drawn again this is the power of the digital animation imagine if this was classic animation where people were drawing on paper one drawing here next drawing next drawing here next drawing oops I made a mistake go back with white out well, digitally, if this is a symbol, right now a really quick mouse, later on I'll draw it really nice and it'll automatically be really nice on screen. But let's take a little break at the moment just to kind of confirm where you're at and such. It's 2.25, we'll take a break until 2.35, just a quick 10 minutes. When we come back we'll add another scene, a little music, and then we'll have a little lab time just in case you don't have your... Uh, storyboard done. So we'll be back at 2.35.